Good evening, everyone, and welcome to this September 26, 2023 legislative meeting of the town of Austin. Please rise and join me. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands. One nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Yeah. Council Member Meyer. Present. Oh, I apologize. Deputy Supervisor Meyer. Present. I'm going to be reprimanded. Council Member Fields to Will. Here. Council Member Manickio. Here. Council Member Weiss. Present. And Supervisor Feldman. Present. Department reports. Uh, Austin. Police Chief Kevin Sylvester. Good evening. Uh, so glad to be back. Uh, uh, so you told me not to tap it or to say anything. It, the green light is on. <laughs> Just for your sake. Thank you. <laughs> All right. So glad to be back. Uh, so, so far, year to date, going from the uh, end of August, September, not being over yet, we've addressed over 26,801 calls for service, 5,325 vehicle and traffic infractions have been issued to the town and village wide and the town specifically, 1,145 of those, about 22% of total tickets issued, which is on pace with the number of blotters that typically and arrests that typically relate from the town. Uh, 494 arrests in total, 75 of those in the town, so about 15% of our arrests, 22% of our tickets in the town outside. Uh, total arrests outside in the town, just so you can understand where those come from, 58 out of those 75, or about 77% of those are for driving with a suspended license or registration. So most of what we do is dealing with people with driving issues. Uh, the next closest category is going to be driving alcohol-related driving offenses. So that covers uh, nearly 90% of what we do. So most of our work being traffic-related, a handful of other things, criminal mischief, contempt charges, assaults, and the like. In terms of uh, activity in the police department, lots going on with staffing. Officers Christian Mesqueda and Robert Kruger recently graduated the police academy with Bobby Kruger being the first honor graduate in our department in recent history. Uh, we welcomed Marquise Randolph, the transfer from the Mount Vernon Police Department. And currently in the academy, we have four officers uh, going through that program and another one scheduled to be here in this room tomorrow night to be hired coming from the Dutchess County Sheriff's Office. <laughs> Exciting stuff. The list is out and we're canvassing again. We have a whole bunch of openings that we look to be filling. Challenges the same as every other community. Uh, hard to find people that are qualified. Passing an agility test seems to be a major hurdle for a lot of folks, but we're looking forward to hiring um, off the countywide list, which gives us access to folks that live in the town outside. There's cool stuff going on now. Uh, in terms of activity in the police department since I've last been here, the mobile crisis response team uh, has fully spooled up. I think we have probably the most active team in Westchester County with our catchment area being Austin, Mount Pleasant, Sleepy Hollow, uh, Pleasantville, and Briarcliff. Uh, their headquarters out of our building. And if you caught us perhaps on the uh, county executive's weekly briefing, we made an appearance down there presenting on behalf of the mobile crisis teams around Westchester County last month. Uh, in July, I completed my term as the president of the New York State Association of Chiefs of Police, so I am now completely done with all of my external things in policing, and this is all I've got. In terms of community outreach, we co-sponsored two block parties with the school district. We had Cops and Kids Kickball, and we continue our monthly program with Feeding Westchester, where anybody who needs groceries can come find us today. Uh, we finally got a day where the rain broke and we were able to feed, I think they said, 200 families. So, that's all from the police department. I'll take any questions if you have any. Um, I just want to uh, uh, commend the department because I noticed there's been a big decrease in the number of accidents over here on this uh, lonely intersection. So um, I just want to. I'm thank very you. glad that you haven't been out here the last two days. We were very, very busy out there in the rain. Oh, really? But no, we, we have. We've been tracking accidents, and, and a lot of um, what, our, what our command staff is doing is trying to target. Uh, traffic enforcement to the highest concentration of accident locations. So the signage and the lights that went in at 9 a.m. 134 are a great improvement over there. Uh, we've had that car, the car steadily focusing out in this area on trying to reduce the number of crashes. So we are, um, but coincidentally, we did have a very, very busy last couple okay. of days. Well, maybe, you know, other than that, other than the other weather, other than that, we've yeah, been very other good. Than the weather, I, from my observation, the number of accidents and issues at that intersection at 9 a.m. 134 is down. 
that yeah. intersection. We did not have one at that intersection. Oh, okay. we've, been, we've been a while. Okay. But all the rest of 9A, people um, oh, always good to remind people to drive slowly, leave some space between you and the car in front of you. And mm -hmm. don't forget that when roads are wet, cars don't stop the same. Mm -hmm. They add the leaves. Yep. Coming soon. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you for having me. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Chief. Chief. Okay, Highway Superintendent and Dale Cemetery Superintendent, Pete Conway. Good evening, everybody. So in the Highway Department, uh, oh, thank you. <laughs> That's how I got it. <laughs> um, we've been concentrating on uh, storm drainage issues in the uh, corridor along North State Road. Uh, we have contracted out to uh, clean some underground culverts in the area and to dredge some open streams. Um, speaking of stormwater, just last week I met with our town engineer Paul Fraioli and uh, engineer James Natarelli from Dolph Engineering um, to look at four locations that give the town a hard time with it, uh, storm and flooding. Um, during the heavy rains. And uh, we're hoping soon that James will submit a report on what's the best course of action to take in those areas and uh, try to eliminate these flooding issues and uh, what the related course would, the cost would be for the improvements. Uh, we cleaned our catch basins, or most of them, with the uh, back truck that we rent every year. It's an ongoing uh, yearly requirement. Uh, Whitetail lift station, our sewer lift station, uh, both pumps and the controls were replaced uh, after being struck by lightning and uh, we were on temporary generator and uh, we had uh, Fred Cook there with his back truck standing by for a couple of days. Uh, the roof over the mechanics garage has been replaced, so that's done. Uh, the office trailer and our facility just received a fresh coat of paint, looks very good. And two entry doors to the trailer, to remember the office trailer, that were rusted were replaced recently. Our guardrail installation program was completed on uh, Croton Dam Road and Brookside Lane. And I don't envision any other guardrails being replaced in the near future. That was like a five year program that the town uh, completed. Congratulations. Oh, thank you. And uh, we continue to work with our uh, tree service vendor. Uh, get a lot of calls for trees. I'm probably out there with trees at least once a week, uh, trimming and taking down trees that are dead in the town right away or on town property. Uh, you know, there's many different trees that are suffering uh, diseases, uh, beech, ash, oak, just to name a few. So that's always ongoing. All the employees in the highway department completed the uh, IT, IT policy course online in August. And uh, last week we began to repaint, repaint the uh, roadway lines on the town maintained roads. Uh, update on our uh, three new trucks we have coming. Uh, expect delivery of the new Packer truck uh, early next year. And of course, what usually happens when you're about ready to get a new truck, something happens to the old, right? Like the fire department right in. Yep. So uh, the clutch went on that, but we did have it replaced, and we use that every Friday for our organic yard waste pickup. And uh, of course, we always continue with our street sweeping, yard waste pickup, weekly vehicle maintenance and repairs, and office administration. On the Dale and uh, Sparta Cemetery side, uh, we have 56 interments to date at Dale Cemetery so far this year. Um, we're getting ready for the final pouring of our monument foundations, which we do in-house, and they'll be complete in October. Uh, Stewart Preservation has again returned this year to repair uh, monuments, the old monuments, and he's been he's been down at Sparta Cemetery the last two years. Um, we had them concentrate in Sparta then, and this year we just you know finished up last week repairing about sixty headstones. They're the white marble, a lot of them. The brown ones are really old, Revolutionary War uh, dated. So, uh, you know, it's a project that's got a, that pays off in the long run. And 
I hope within five years, we'll kind of wrap that up and just keep up with a few of them as they come, you know, each year, either by vandalism or just falling over by themselves. So, and, uh, you know, the crew over there continues to perform their regular work in uh, interments. That's what I have. Did you see that the county is going to do a big uh, revolution in the 250 year? Yes. Yes. Yeah, um, yeah. Have you? So nobody's going go to the. Uh, I get a little. Um, yeah, they're they're having a big meeting soon. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. I asked Carolyn to go. Okay. But uh, we have a cemetery that was, mm -hmm. yeah, you know, instrumental. Right. So. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, if everybody's aware, one of them was struck by a cannonball down in. Um, Sparta from the river uh, and uh, the pieces were all broke. Some of them are at the historical society, but this guy from Stewart Preservation, he dug down and found a lot more of the pieces that fell into the ground. Mm -hmm. So it was pretty cool. We're trying to get somebody to put them together and then be able to mount that again in the in the wall. So there's a plaque there already. If you ever get a chance, you want to go down and, and read it, but uh, it just eventually fell apart. So he's trying to put that back together. Good. Just in time. Yeah, be nice. Okay. All right. Thank you. Good night. Thanks for having me. Uh, supervisor and town board announcements. So, a reminder that our weekly meetings are scheduled to be here at John Fowler Data Center until further notice and are available on Zoom as well. Our tax receiver would like you to know that school tax is due by September 30th. However, since September 30th falls on a Saturday, you have until October 2nd to pay without incurring any penalty. Feel free to call the tax receiver's office with any questions. Some things that are happening around town this week, uh, the Westchester County Multilingual Job Fair is scheduled for this Thursday, September 28th, from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. at the Westchester County Center. The Westchester Collaborative Theater will be presenting a play in the box this Friday, September 29th at 8 p.m., Saturday, September 30th at 2 p.m. and 8 p.m., and Sunday, October 1st at 3 p.m. Uh, ticket prices are $15. The Star of Bethlehem Church will be hosting a youth mental health first aid course this Saturday, September 30th from 9.30 to 3.30. The 39th annual Rotary Car Show is on Sunday, October 1st at the Croton Harmon train station from 11 p.m. to 3 to 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. Um, and if you go, don't forget to visit the electrical electric vehicle corral organized by our very own Nina. On Wednesday, October 4th at 2.20 p.m., there will be a FEMA and FCC emergency alert test. Um, I think this one goes to your cell phone and really alerts everything. So be aware that all of a sudden everything's going to go off at 2.20 p.m. on Wednesday. The Green Austin Townwide Tag Sale will take place Saturday, October 7th from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. The Jazz Picnic at Dale Cemetery uh, will be taking place Sunday, October 15th from 2 to 4 p.m. And that's hosted by the Austin Historic Cemeteries Conservancy. The old mill singers are looking for singers to join them. All levels are welcome. Rehearsals will be held every Tuesday from 7.30 to 9.30 at St. Paul's on the Hill. The Austin Recreation and Parks will be having their annual trunk or treat October 31st from 6 to 8 p.m. on Main Street. They are looking for more cars and more trunks to participate. Please email Bill Garrison at wgarrison at villageofaustin.org if interested. And there is a free Parkinson's dance class every Tuesday from 1.30 to 2.30 p.m. at Bethany Arts Community Center. That's all I have. Do any of my colleagues have any announcements? No. All right. How about liaison reports? Okay. Moving okay. on, public comment on agenda item. Is there anyone here that would like to speak? A public comment on an agenda item? Are you on a, on a remote, a uh, virtual? If you if you're virtual, raise your virtual little hand. Nope. Okay. Moving on. 
Board resolutions, approval of minutes, regular meeting, September 12th, 2023. Resolved that the town board of the town of Boston hereby approves the September 12th, 2023 minutes at a regular meeting as presented. Do I have a motion? So moved. And a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Approval of voucher detail report. Resolved that the town board of the town of Austin hereby approves the voucher detail report dated September 26, 2023 in the amount of $891,940.70. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Personnel uh, town court resignation for retirement. Resolved that the town board of the town of Austin accepts with regret the res resignation for purposes of retirement of Ann Carol Malone from the position as court clerk effective September 30th, 2023. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. I will say uh, Ann has been the person running and in charge of the court for a long time now, and she will be here next. Right. All in favor? With regret? Aye. Aye. Personnel town court motion. Resolved that the town board of the town of Austin appoints Marnell as Cole Austin for the position of town clerk effective October 2nd, 2023 at an annual salary of $65,620. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Personnel. Oh, I apologize. It's I said it's court clerk. <coughs> Good try. <laughs> Personnel, Town Building Department, resignation for retirement. Resolved that the Town Board of the Town of Bossy accepts with re, uh, uh, accepts the re resignation for purposes of retirement of John Hamilton from the business position of Town Building Inspector, effective January 1, 2023. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. Uh, our building inspector, our former building inspector, John Hamilton, has Stuck around to help our new building inspector John Turnquist learn the ropes, and we are thankful for the time that he has given and all the years that he's given. In favor? Aye. Aye. Personnel, Town Building Department appointment resolved that the Town Board of the Town of Austin appoints John Turnquist Austin to the position of Town <coughs> Building Inspector part time, effective September 25th, 2023, at an annual salary of $59,220. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. License agreement, Greater Austin Chamber of Commerce, Inc. Resolved that the Town Board of the Town of Austin authorizes the supervisor to sign a license agreement with the Greater Austin Chamber of Commerce, Inc., 109 Croton Avenue, Austin, New York, 10562, to rent Cedar Lane Park Pavilion and surrounding grass area to hold music festival entitled Up the River Blues Fest on Saturday, October 21st, 2023. I have a motion? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. New York City, uh, excuse me, New York State Liquor Authority Special Event Permit Application Up the River Wounds Festival. Resolved that the Town Board of the Town of Austin hereby authorizes the supervisor to sign the landlord authorization form for the New York State Liquor Authority Special Event Permit Application made by six degrees or less for the Up the River Blues Festival on October 21st, 2023 at Cedar Lane Park and be it further resolved that the applicant will provide proof of insurance and a letter of indemnity to the town in the form that's acceptable for the council for the town. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. New York State Authority Special Permit Application. Spectacular. Fall Fest. Resolved that the Town Board of the Town of Austin hereby authorizes the uh, supervisor to sign a landlord authorization form for the New York State, State Liquor Authority Special Events Permit application for six degrees or less for the spectacular Fall Fest on October 28, 2023 at Ryder Park and be it further resolved the applicant will provide proof of insurance and a letter of indemnity to, to the town in the form acceptable to the Council of the Town. A motion? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Contract online auction. Resolved that the town board of the town of Austin authorizes the supervisor to sign an agreement with Auctions International Inc., East Aurora, New York, 14052, for online auction of surplus government vehicles, machinery, equipment, and other surplus assets of the town of Austin. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.
for authorized uh, authorized request for proposal advancing energy code compliance technology platform. That is a mouthful. <laughs> Resolved that the town board of the town of Austin hereby issues a request for the proposals for, to, for the advancing energy code compliance technology platform with proposals due back to the office of the town clerk by 10 a.m. Thursday, October 17th, 2023. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. A resolution, declaration of surplus. Whereas the town of Austin recently engaged in a planned improvements in the senior programs kitchen which included replacing equipment that had been used by the senior program for many years, specifically stainless steel table with cabinet, one shelf in the middle and sliding doors, 83 inches long by 30 inches wide by 35 inches high, electric steam table, four bays with bottom shelf on wheels and fold down shelf on the top, 63 inches long, 22 inches wide and 24 inches high, two sink counters, two faucets and four door cabinet underneath this, and the sink dimensions are there and one electric stove and hood without fame. Uh, collectively, the, re uh, the replacement equipment and whereas the replaced equipment has exceeded its useful life and there's no other town department or staff that have, to, have a kitchen or a facility to uh, utilize the re uh, replaced equipment as part of the town operations. And now therefore it be it resolved, the town board hereby declares the replaced equipment as surplus town property for which the town has no use. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Cabaret license, the Brightwood Manor and Catering Corporation. Whereas the Brightwood Manor and Catering Corporation has filed an application for a cabaret license for its leased property located at 25 Studio Hill Road, Briarcliff Manor, New York 10510. And whereas the town board has reviewed the application and attachments thereof, as well as reports from the involved departments, including the police department and the building department. And whereas the town board held a duly noticed public hearing for its regular meeting on Tuesday, September 12th, 2023 and members of the public had the opportunity to attend to be heard. The public hearing was closed on September 12, 2023. And now therefore be it resolved that the town board of the town of Austin hereby approves the application of the Briarcliff Manor Restaurant and Catering Corporation, 25 Studio Hill Road, Briarcliff Manor in the unincorporated area of the town of Austin for a cabaret license through December 31st, 2024. Have and they may have bands, disc jockey with no more than six performers at one time from 12 p.m. to 12, 11 p.m. daily, and be a further resolved that the town board hereby directs the applicant to ensure strict adherence to all requirements in the town code and state law, and specifically the town board determines it necessary to order, in order to protect health, safety, and welfare of the residents of the town of Austin to expressly condition its approval upon the applicant's adherence to the following. The applicant must ensure that the back doors will be kept closed at all times, except when being used for egress and, and egress. The applicant shall not play amplified music outdoors at any time. The applicant must not amplify any kind outdoors of any, at any time. And the applicant shall utilize sound meters to monitor the sound levels when amplified music is played. And be it further resolved that if the if applicant fails to adhere to the conditions stated above, the town board reserves the right to take whatever action is necessary and appropriate under the law. And be it further resolved, the town board reserves the right to revisit this application and its decision when the applicant applies for its next cabaret license based on, upon the facts and circumstances presented to the town board at that time. And its decision shall not establish a precedent, but for this application or any other applicant seeking a cabaret license and be it further resolved that the town clerk is hereby directed to send the applicant a certified copy of this resolution. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. All in favor. Aye. Aye. Yeah. Monthly reports. Resolved that the town board of the town of Austin hereby accepts the monthly reports for the month of August, 2023. Tax receiver. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Recogn visitor recognition. <laughs> Visitors shall be afforded a one four minute period to speak. Please identify yourself and tell us where you live. 
Ellen Rebecca Holland, 83, Gadung Drive, Austin, New York. Um, I tend to walk a lot. My husband and I both enjoy doing that around the area. And the roads have gotten progressively more pitted and falling apart, literally. Uh, I called Pete Connolly, and knowing the quality of the highway department was not surprised when he said, I know. I do have an estimate already on how to prepare that. But having an estimate and proposing it in the budget are not the same as it getting into the budget because I know things have to be balanced. The road at this point is dangerous. I am concerned a child hits a rut and goes flying in front of a car. Angle gets twisted, somebody falls and gets injured. It's a danger to the constituents and quite honestly, it's also a liability for the town. So Judy and I were discussing this and Judy Weintraub said, we put together a petition and just let them know how many people are concerned about this. So we did that. So what I don't want anyone to think is that we think there's an issue with the highway department. The highway department is phenomenal, absolutely wonderful. But we do urge the town to include getting those roads repaired in this budget. The pictures I sent to the town board, those were after patching of the more egregious and it was only a few of the issues within a five household distance from my house. And that's not even the worst that there is. I will invite any of you to come walk with us. It's the Dung, it's Cooper, it's Stonegate, it's the cul-de-sacs. It's, I haven't checked out Donald. Okay, I should be doing that long a walk, but I haven't been. The other thing I would say is also I noticed, and this was done a while back, I went to my friend's house on Cooper and pulled into her driveway and it literally jolted my back because when they put curbs there, they also put it then in front of the driveways and it was at such a height that literally my mother who uses a walker would not be able to get into the house, get up to the house because she wouldn't be able to get up the driveway because the curb is so high in front of the driveway. So, I mean, <clears throat> Well, we need to have the paving done. And I know there's been some discussion of whether or not there should be curbs done at the same time to get rid of the asphalt. I would ask that they not go in front of the driveways themselves so that it becomes a smooth entrance for people who have issues walking or a kid on a bicycle. Um, the petition I already handed to Sue earlier. So you have it and I thank you. Have a good evening. Thank you. Thank you very much. Is there anyone else that maybe in our virtual world that want to uh, speak? I will say we identified that as a priority um, earlier in the year and have been exploring it. And that I don't know the particular driveway or area, but sometimes the curves are used for stormwater protection mm. um, for the house that they're high enough so water doesn't run down into. So Makes sense. Sometimes. Don't know that situation. But, okay. But thank you. Thank you. Okay, we don't have anybody else on, on board tonight. So I would like a motion to adjourn into a special work session, discussion of River Knoll. So uh, moved. Second. All in favor. Aye. Aye. Linda for mile. I've been asked to uh, do a quick overview for union members. For record, we also have our planner about it. Can you like the book first? What do you think? Give me one second again. I'm pulling it up. I just share the screen. Give me one second. Thank you. Thank you for all your help with planning this. You're welcome. That was great. Water bottle. Sue. Oh, Water bottle. Oh, thank you. I would be looking for it for two days. Yeah, I'm going to give you the keyboard. Okay. Right. 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 So just jump into it. Um, so we had proposed previously.
previously a, uh, a multifamily project on the site. Can you guys hear me okay? Yes. Yeah. And um, uh, we're now proposing a townhouse project that has 66 market rate units, 20 moderately priced townhouse units, and then another 10% affordable. And 10% affordable, you mean um, in accordance with the town code, which is 60%. That's correct. Okay. Yeah, and I have the actual calculations as part of this. Okay. So I thought I'd do a very quick um, overview of the site today. You know, it was a hospital that uh, dates back to the Civil War land and um, has been uh, you know, highly uh, been out of operation for about eight or nine years. And uh, there's a lot of uh, deferred maintenance. It's the northern boundary uh, looking up towards uh, Grandview near Pershing. Uh, also down near uh, Pershing, the southeast corner. This is um, once again down, down near Pershing, near uh, Croton Dam Road. There was a former pool there and a, a bathhouse years ago. So the proposal we start out with back in night, uh, 2015 was a 188 unit multifamily project, which you see here, which was situated up on top of the hill, 188 units with underground parking and kind of Adirondack style. And there was some concern with that. It was a rental project. People were concerned that uh, it might bring in transient residents, less permanent residents, um, school age children that might, um, uh, grow the school, uh, each classroom size, uh, concern with additional traffic, particularly at 9A, and um, with the offset of educating those new students that would come out of it, concern about it being tax positive. So we were encouraged to look at what we're proposing today. And so these are, we, we started our first reviews back in 2016. And we resubmitted in 17, 2018, 2019, a second time in 2019. So we've gone through five prior submissions. And we have gone through uh, five different uh, planning board chairs and um, multiple public uh, presentations. Um, so as um, you see the 10% will be in accordance with um, the uh, HUD regulations for seniors community. And our most recent submission, which is this uh, seniors community was uh, submitted back at the beginning of 2001. So during the review, there was concern about um, having more uh, affordable units than just the 10%. There was some concern about the units that abutted, uh, the number of units that abutted first and second avenues, the closeness of those units. And then um, there was a, de a desire for uh, a broader bandwidth of price points. So we went back to the drawing board. So this is, I'm gonna go through some of the designs now. This is, uh, if you were heading westbound on Croton Dam Road and the meadow that currently exists today will remain, uh, we will have uh, swales there that will help uh, catch stormwater and will percolate. Um, so uh, I'm going to back up a second. And the brown road in the front is actually going to be a weight-bearing uh, grass road that will have a barrier, and it's for emergency vehicles only. The primary entrance for the entire project is where the current um, Stony Lodge Hospital entrance is today. I'll use my pointer. So the, yeah, the current entrance is here, and this is that um, emergency road. Okay, so this is now looking eastbound on Croton Dam Road, and we're going to have a, um, a community building um, there with a pool. 
And this is uh, my architect's current thinking of what it would look like. So an aerial view of the project. Um, there are two cul-de-sacs essentially. The entry it comes in here alongside that entry feature and there's a cul-de-sac that goes up to the top where the current um, the hospital buildings are and then a second cul-de-sac that winds around the back and turns out there's a second emergency access that goes out to Narragansett Avenue near the park, which is up here. Okay. And there are currently, just giving you sort of a frame reference, we, as we designed it, we were very careful to try to create green buffers around the homes that backing up uh, on Pershing. There's actually an existing building here. We're pushing back the uh, units further away from that current building. And similarly, creating green buffers down here from um, per Pershing. This is Grandview Pershing, and then Narragansett goes back. Up. Narragansett is up here. This is uh, first, first and second avenues, or first and second avenues. Okay. Another view of it. One of the concerns that was expressed by the planning board was the density of these units over here. And we were proposing 30 stacker units there. And the new plan has only 10 units. So we now have 10 units there. These are the 10 units. There's two, 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 two. And these are fairly um, sizable units. This is a view from Second Avenue looking up to the site. The current hospital buildings actually sit above, above the highest elevation of our units up there. And this is if you were standing on Narragansett here near the park and looking up at the project. So we're doing it in a, what is considered modern farmhouse style. It has clapboard and shingle siding, um, lots of wood detailing on the uh, posts, um, a fair amount of glass to make them units bright inside. These are actually uh, what the affordable units will look like, with a palette of gray and white and, and dark colors. And some of the units, because the site slopes, have um, access to the lowest level. Many of these units will have the option to put elevators in them because they will appeal to an empty nester or older. Um, and then the, the garage is down, but behind the garage, the opportunity to put in a small gym or a second office. All these units will have a one officer den but we expect many of the uh, buyers will have, will be two couple, will be a couple that'll both be um, working. Another view of what we think the affordable units will end up looking like. And then some sub, um, sections through the property. Here's Pershing Avenue, the closest unit, which is pretty close to the entrance is almost 270 feet away, but these units, homes, look actually into the hillside, so I won't see them. The closest unit uh, in the entire project on 2nd Avenue is 85 feet away to its nearest point. There exists today a maintenance building right here as an example, so it's further set back from that maintenance building, which is that um, dotted outline there. So this is a breakdown of units. Um, we have the moderate priced units, moderately sized units, which I'll show, give you a little more detail on. We have two bedroom townhouse units, three bedroom townhouse units, and then those five, 10 units on the back, their first and second avenue, which are actually our largest units, um, or 10 of them um, over almost 2,000 feet. And then the affordable units we have 
uh, seven uh, affordable two bedrooms and three affordable uh, portables. Okay. So this is the calculation for the affordable units. It's based on as was uh, Christy said, 60% of AMI, and you look at whether it's a three or four person um, family, and then the, the uh, income levels are determined based on county levels at 33%, and then you look at uh, utilities taxes and HOA fees to come up with the um, what can be paid, and then backing in at a 5% mortgage rate. Proxies are the proximate numbers that um, would be spent. So, um, so when we looked around the county, um, the county has a, a two or three of these projects for empty nesters that are. Um, have a strong and strong demand. There's a very large um, number of people who have homes, want to get out of their homes, don't want, no longer want to have maintenance, don't want to do any outdoor maintenance, want to use that time to travel, see their children that are up and out. And so all of these projects have done particularly well. There's nothing like it really in the immediate um, greater Austin area. Uh, there can be fairly uh, sizable townhouses with large entry foyers, um, larger kitchens. As I said, they'll all have dens. They'll have the ability to put in a, um, a an elevator. They'll all be professionally managed in a condominium association. And as we said, they're they're hope up communities. So there will also be, because there are no uh, children that have been thrown off by the project, the revenues from them, the tax revenues are highly tax positive. Um, there's no offsetting uh, school costs. So there's uh, large new revenues that will go to the school, about $721,000 will in order to benefit the school. And, um, and the total increase over services is about eight hundred thousand dollars to the town and the school district. Um, the, the aspects that seem to uh, be most prominent in people's minds is certainly traffic, um, because we're talking about an empty nester profile. These people tend to not be peak avenue, excuse me, <laughs> peak hour commuters. And um, we have done plenty of uh, traffic analysis, which uh, our consultants, the town's consultants, have reviewed ad nauseum. The um, project is projected to have 19 peak morning trips, both in and out, and 25 peak evening trips uh, in and out uh, during that period of time. Okay. And that's less than if the uh, hope the uh, hospital were reopened. Um, the stormwater system is designed so that um, there will be zero runoff to the adjacent neighborhoods. Some of the homes that are at the corner of Pershing and Croton Dam Road do experience runoff today, as well as some of the homes down on First and Second Avenues. All of that. All of that uh, runoff will be channeled into stormwater basins, so those homes will see great improvement. <clears throat> we only have one very small wetland, 1.4 acres, excuse me, 0.14 acres down in the corner of Narragansett. It's essentially runoff from Narragansett Avenue, and we have a 100 foot buffer around that, so the the total area, including the buffer, is about a half an acre, and none of the development um, will go into that area. And then through our review, all of the water needs and wastewater, uh, we have there's sufficient ca capacity with the Osney Water Resource Recovery Facility, and uh, the same with wastewater. 
That's that's a high level. Thank you. So I take questions. The board has. So just just for a little bit of background <laughs> as to why this project is before the board at this time. Um, that this project has been going through the seeker review process for quite a while um, before the planning board. And the planning board has been considering a finding statement. They considered that at their September 20th meeting. That date is right. Um, but it was a couple weeks ago. And so um, that is going to be back on their agenda at their October meeting. So once the finding statement is complete, then um, the seeker process is complete. And one of the reasons why this application is relevant to this board, the reason, is because um, it will require a zone change for this property. So what the, the applicant was originally proposing was to create a new multifamily zone called the MF2 zone. Um, that has, with the modifications that have been made to the project that the applicant just went through with you from the apartment style to the townhome style, um, now what's being proposed is to have an existing um, MF1 zone that is currently in the town code uh, be applied to the property. So the applicant will have to submit a new petition in order to facilitate that. And so, but once the secret process is complete, then it will come back before this board for um, the zone change petition. And there will have to be a public hearing held and um, the board will have to consider that. So this is an opportunity for the board to kind of, um, we have several new members and to also just reacclimate everyone with the project in anticipation that this may be coming back before the board for the zone change application in the near future. Valerie, if there's anything. Yeah. Um, so you got to have a lay yeah. yeah. All right, so a couple other things. Um, so once, once the zone change, once they, if this board approves the zone change, and we go back to the planning board for site plan approval. So uh, while there's a lot of like concept plans and there are a lot of details that were provided uh, this evening, there'll be even more details that will be worked out at the planning board dealing with like landscaping, also dealing with finalizing some of the stormwater, the wetlands, and, and the final site plan design of the project as well. So it's getting there through the process. So, so there's still more work that has yes. to be done to to nail down on the design aspect, but they've they've done enough work during the environmental review process that the planning board is is at the point where they feel comfortable at least considering a finding statement that'll end the secret process because then it'll bring it back to this board and then ultimately go back to the planning board to to nail down all those details. So um, you mentioned um, changing the zoning, going back to an MF one is considered a change. So it's it's not in any sort of multifamily zoning right now. Oh, it's not. It, right. It's it's in a, a single family residential zone. R R fifteen. It's in the R fifteen okay. zone. Um, this is a unique property in that it's considerably larger, as you can imagine, from all the other properties that are around it, and has it hasn't historically been used as a single family residence. So that's pretty much the basis for, for what is being contemplated. But but right now it is not in any sort of multi-family zone. What was being proposed originally was a new zone, which would have been more complicated because then we would have had to look at all of the other properties in the town that could potentially be applied to that zone. Here we're just, the, the applicant is just asking to apply an existing multi-family zone to this property. So it simplifies the analysis. I have a question. Sure. Um, I'm sure you're familiar with the nearby um, Parthenal development. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure if you are aware that that property um, has had difficulty with getting full, you know, full, full capacity with their residents. Um, do you have any concerns knowing that those, you know, those properties have not been able to, you know, go to full capacity. Do you have any concerns? Well, it's a rental. It's a rental. So we're talking about a different type of product. Um, completely different. Uh, the, 
that, that's unusual. I don't know what their levels of rentals are, but throughout the county, all of the, just many as you may have seen, driving around White Plains or Yonkers or New Rochelle, pretty much every town has new multifamily rental and all of them universally are doing really well. So I don't know what that particular sponsor may or may not be doing. As, as far as uh, age-restricted condos, there are very few of them throughout the county. The ones that have come to market have done particularly well. And it's because the demographic uh, wants to get out of houses. They don't want to have a house anymore. Uh, they want the freedom of something that's in a condominium association. They want a unit that's smaller, but still ample. Where you can bring the furniture in and still have a place for your credentials or whatever. Um, so we're very bullish on it. Uh, it's a different product. You keep saying condominium. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know that this was intended to work for condominium over. Well, I think the uh, the project is for the use of the land. Um, so the use of the land is for residential. I mean, ultimately, you know, that's perfect. Christy, on that, I mean, I think the 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 issue is the use of the land as as residential is really what the focus of the seeker review is on. And that ultimately they did do the calculations for the financial for a condo project. And the condo project still shows it as uh, a net economic benefit to the town. Okay, I, I do know that we did take steps to make sure that none of our buds turned into condominiums a while ago and that the town was really not interested in having any more with the, you know, we had the whole. There, there's a difference between a Planned unit development mm -hmm. and condos. No, I yeah. understand that, but the tax break is the thing that. But the, we have a we have a law in the books that um, we can't have we don't have anymore. Right? That there any new condos won't be homestead if that's what you're concerned. Yeah, about. yeah. So okay, the, so the, the, if, if that's if that's what you're concerned that's about. That's my concern. Okay. Yeah. Okay. We, because we looked at this a few years ago. Right. We were actually getting geared up to adopt a law, and then we looked at the code and realized that there is actually a law in the books. I can pull that up, but I, I don't think that should be an issue. If, okay. If that's yeah, right. that's, that's sure. just how that like, gets taxed as opposed to the whether it can be condo versus rental versus because um, normally in any sort of development, even if like a development gets built as a for sale product. It could be turned into a rental at some point in time because it's not about the use of land. That's more of the finance thing. Similar to if you have a single family home and then you decide to rent out your single family home, there's nothing that says you can't do that. No, it's the tax break. Then. Yeah. yeah. No, we we have something on the books that said and it says anything that comes on. I'll I'll, I'll pull it up and and we can talk about that at a later date. Um, we certainly okay. have time, but um, just being sure. Yeah. Um, we have Article 9 of Chapter geez, 180, which is taxation, which talks about this issue. So that 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 shouldn't be a concern for the board. I will say this is a much better fit than the original budget. So. Um, I had a question about one of your slides, the one I think it was behind Second Avenue. Mm -hmm. Going for a little bit up, no, one more back, the other, two back. To go up the other way? The other way. The one with the little outline of the building, that one. Why don't I get a bigger one then? You want a bigger one? Um, bigger slide? Well, the one with the little outline was fine. That was the one that this, caught my interest. This is second. Is that what you want? Uh, no, it was yes. way the back. Other one? Okay, <laughs> go back. Keep going, keep going, keep going. That one. All right, so the existing building um, to be demolished. Yes. So that's the height of the building. So how much fill, how tall, how much fill are you adding? Like what's well, the height of That's what you're probably adding? seven feet from the existing grade. Okay. Yeah, you want to talk about the retaining walls, Carmen? I don't know if you touched upon that then. You know, throughout the project, there are a series of retaining walls. Um, 
you know, all these projects have retaining walls. Um, um, what do you want in particular? Right, so I'll, I'll just say, so originally the original application uh, before, the, before the planning board and during the secret process originally had uh, the retaining walls as like upwards to over like 20 feet. Um, and uh, we asked, the planning board asked the, you know, Glenn to look at the potential redesign of those retaining walls. So now you'll see that they're stacked and oh, so right. they're stacked. They step. step, right. So and then, then there's not, plantings yeah. as they step. So to Valerie's point, that's that right there, that location is probably one of the worst in the entire project. Right. And we've been very careful to do. Yeah, the planning board had concerns with that. So we went back to the drawing board and we redid this whole area because of that. We pushed the units back, we lowered them, and then we staggered the retaining walls and put planting in them. Right. So now each retaining wall is no more than eight feet. So okay. it'd be eight feet with a step back and then you know, eight feet. That's much better than a 25 foot. Yeah. The units are uh, most of level, there are no one floor, of no flats. Well, it's a good example right there. But okay. there's an elevator option for those right. who want to agent this. And this is an example of the three because the back of it actually tucks into the property. The garage is beneath it. And as I was pointing out earlier, you have the ability to put a mm -hmm. gym or a, a second office down there. But each level will have a four by four closet so that going all the way up, so that you can put in a, uh, an elevator at any time. I got one question. Uh, thank you for the presentation. Thanks for bringing this up to date. Uh, just the MF1 zone, I don't know if Valerie or Christy's been into this, is, um, is there a threshold for how many units can be in that multifamily? Like, is it from 10 to 100, then you have to go to MF2? No, there is no MF2. There is so no MF1 is what exists. So, where did MF2 come from? That was just the original. That, was, that was the original proposal that was never to, create, before. to okay. create a new zone. And the complication was that then we would have had to look at all the other properties in the town that it could potentially be applied to based upon um, what the applicant was contemplating in terms of the criteria, the amount of acreage, the amount of setbacks, and whatnot. Um, when, the, when the project was modified, then it was to apply an existing zone. Um, I don't think we have any issue with density, right? No, um, the the only potential issue I think could be with setbacks or coverage. There's uh, no, I think there's a, there's a couple with the, there's a couple of variances that are going to be required based upon uh, a setback that's setbacks between the houses, and that's something that they'll have to seek a variance from the zoning board of appeals for. between the newer houses. Yeah, not yeah, yeah. Houses it, within the the development, right, okay. within the development, right, within the development itself. Um, they are, they do meet all the zoning requirements in terms of like the heights um, and also the densities, as well as the livable floor rear controlling unit and then the set box. But the same as one has no minimums and no maximums as far as units in that zone. So the minimums and maximums are based upon the density uh, per dwelling, I mean, per square footage. The size of the so, size of lot, yeah. which and is- And each, each home is, is in its own separate lot, or is that going to be all one big lot? And then where are the boundaries for those homes going to be? It's, it's a condominium. So there are no lots per se, because it's condominium, but here I'll show you. So it's a condominium and um, yeah. Picture of Fox Hill. And you'll, you'll have an HOA, right? Well, the equivalent of an HOA, Condominium Association, yeah, okay. but it'll be maintained by uh, professional management and um, also have the ability to go away because we expect this, this demographic to be big travelers to meet in the HOA and will watch your unit for you and take care of on your own. Yeah, and I think another thing um, to also explain a little bit more so there's a number of different, well, Glenn was showing the design for, I guess, the larger of all the units. There's a number of stacker units and smaller units yes. within this development to kind of, I think one of the concerns from the, the town board was that we wanted a varying price point 
not just like affordable and luxury, but then also a middle ground for other market various uh, market rate units. And so that has been incorporated into this project. That's, right. That's a good point. I forgot to mention that. So we had, we have here, here, and here, a number of moderately priced units. They're not what, what the other units will go out. They'll be, you know, in the four and five hundred thousand dollar range. The other units will be more expensive. These units on the top had literally have views of the Hudson out here. The beautiful views. Um, so, uh, and then we have the affordable units. We have ten affordable units, and I went through the uh, calculations on the pricing of those already. Uh, you showed me the distance away on Pershing and First. Would you have any distance on Grandview? How close? That's um, it is to the. I have Grandview. No, I don't have a cross section on Grandview, but uh, it's you know it's it's a green buffer. We've been very careful to pull it back. I will go to that slide here. This slide shows there's an existing building today on Grandview. Mm -hmm. It um, was used as a uh, game and uh, athletic facility. And I actually have a view of it in one of my earlier slides. And our development is further away from the Grandview homes. That's it in the background right there. So behind that building, on the other side of it, are the homes on Grandview. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mentioned that. And this is the back side of that grand view. I believe that's the back side of it. Yes, grand view happened the back side of that building we just looked at. Mm -hmm. Excuse me. Oh, uh, you mentioned an emergency road. Is that for um, hopefully that will fire? Yeah, fire. Right. And the likelihood of it ever being used is probably really remote. Yeah. But just in case something, because there, there are no trees, that's usually the concern. Of the of fires, a tree may fall across that entrance. There are no not going to be any large trees there, so the likelihood of that occurring. But we still, the fire department will want that. Here's the entrance down there. We might have some small trees, but this is the, more or less closer to the north end of Croton Dam Road, heading out to 9A this way. And there's a weight bearing, but it'll actually look like grass when you're down at street level. Okay. And then there's a similar road going out to Narragansett way over here. Okay. So no services from the town will be needed there. Everything's done in-house. Snow plowing, all that. Yes. Well, we, we have not gotten to a place where we decide whether the streets have, will be dedicated or not. We'll probably keep them in a condo, but that's going to be a bigger conversation later. Okay. Uh, obviously, all the landscaping will be maintained by the condominium. The exterior of all the units are maintained, cleaning the gutters, all of that's maintained by the condo. The um, lower corner there is the distance between Grandview and is there connectivity the sidewalk like over over to, around the property to get, like, say you're on Chrome Dam Road, you want to get to the best park. Mm -hmm. Is there a path that's going to be able to cut through there? Yeah, you, you can walk. walk. Yes. Would it be open to the public on Chrome Dam residents or just to the people that live in there? Yeah, they can get through. I think that they want that. I am not sure from a gradient standpoint, if you're down here, because this is an up incline going up this way. So I'm guessing if you're one of the homes down here, you would probably cut across Grandview and come up near Narragansett back here. It's my guess. And then similarly, did I say Grandview? I meant Pershing. Mm -hmm. Pershing, I meant. Grandview's up here. So, you know, there's two or three homes that I don't know if they would cross over there or not. It looks like a winding drive. <laughs> Else? Okay. No, uh, having been on the board in uh, 2019, I appreciate the work you've done to, to change the project uh, and to meet some of the specifications we asked for. You board back? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you for taking the yeah. time to come and do a presentation. Um, it's appreciated, and I know my uh, newer board members really wanted to have a closer look.
Yes. Yes. Um, are we going to get a copy of this presentation? Yeah, I, I can email it mm -hmm. to you guys. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, I'm fine with that. Yeah. I mean, realistically, you have your book. We have. <laughs> That, that, that's a more <laughs> Yes, I do. You and Sam, insomnia. Is there any further questions? I guess. Valerie, can we stick around for five minutes? Oh, sure. Um, all right. <laughs> Executive session for advice of council personnel and contract. So moved. Second. Our favor. Uh, All right. Thank you for joining us for our combination legislative and work session. Look forward to seeing you next week. Thank you.